I think maybe last time I was too stupid to see this for some reason, but I'm pretty sure we tried this is super user thing. And let's say hello to my little cat Joey over here. Aren't you cute? But I need to hack this website right now. All right, it looks like we're gonna have to deal with this hacking cat for a while. So I'm pretty sure last time I tried to change my profile into a super user, but somehow completely didn't take a look at this is super user. Let's just go with ID 12 and let's set our profile to super user as well as our is super user true. I'm pretty sure I tried that already and it didn't work like I wanted and execute it. It looks like it worked out. And if we check out our user, it says in here that we are a super user. So far, so good. Let's get the admin functionality. So let's try if we can execute this and we get not authorized. Ah, oh, maybe, maybe it was my plugin, which still used the old authorization token. So we just found another vulnerability, which is that the JVT tokens are valid forever. If you remember last time we created this token and it was like a week ago or even more time since then and the token is still valid, that shouldn't be the case. So let's just sign in again and execute it so that we get a new token that we can add into our plugin. So in here we got the old token. So let's just add this new token and then retry to fetch this docs again. And now we should be logged in with our new token, which should be an admin token. So let's check this one out here real quick. Try it out, execute. And we are finally a super user Efting, fiddling around with the plugin that I just added to get to the docs in the first place. But this means that we can get the user flag and we got a file. Looks like it's a flag. So let's try if that's the correct one. So let's submit the flag and make it maybe a not too easy. And it was the user flag as the method suggested that it would be. Now we have this right file at our disposal, which um, looks pretty neat. We can create a file on the server. Can we just create a file on the server? Okay, let's write a file on the server. File name input is encoded in base64 URL. So let's try one, let's call it test. Let's execute it and then debug key missing from JVT. What is a debug key missing from JVT? I've never heard or seen something like that. So it doesn't seem that we ha are lucky enough to create our own files at the moment, but maybe let's try something. Um, so let's try, maybe we can just Etsy pass not found. Oh, <laughs> the file name input is encoded in base64 URL as well. So may that maybe let's uh, go to a neat tool called cyber chef. So this is an amazing tool. Um, Burp has something similar, but smaller and with less functionality, I think. And in here, you can essentially get any data to any other format. So you can even use different things like public key, arithmetic and logic, utils, date, time, compression. You can use this for software engineering. You can use this for hacking. It's an amazing tool. Yeah, you should definitely check it out. If I don't forget to paste the link into the description. Now, all we need to do is say how we want our recipe to work. So let's just start with base 64. And the neat thing is here we can select which kind of base 64. Let's go with URL safe. I think that's what they are referring to in base 64 URL. So let's go with this one. And you can also combine multiple things together into a big recipe. We are not gonna do that. We are just going to go with the, with the base 64 one and try to get Etsy pass with the, and here we get an output and then we paste it in here and then we get, um, the Etsy pass with the, which is amazing. Um, maybe we can also try to read, I don't know, root 
flag. I have no idea if this is gonna work. Internal server error. I'm guessing that file doesn't exist. Maybe, maybe we can read something from slash home. And I mean, they're usually called HTB. So let's use HTB. And now I'm being stupid. I want to read the file. I need some file. Um, I mean, let's try SSH ID RSA. <laughs> Maybe we can get the SSH key of the user. I mean, why not? And we get nothing. All right. I'm pretty sure the user is called SSH, but maybe we can find out more about the system because the fun thing in Linux, everything is a file. So we can essentially read the entire information of the system. For example, we can, we can look at the files of the running processes because they're all, because all the information of all the processes that are running on Linux are stored in a file somewhere in this slash proc. I'm not sure what we are looking for, but essentially we can get something out of here. Now, a lot of things are just numbers, so maybe we have to brute force this. However, there is one special process which we don't need the number for, which is self. So if you run, if you check on the self process, um, it should just check on the process that is currently running, which in our case will be the running web application. But um, this self is just the, uh, the folder for the currently running process. So if we check out what's in a proc, let's just go with, I don't know, self. It will show to 133. And in here, oh, in here we have some fun things like what do we have cmd line and that will what will that tell us let's check out cat cmd line okay doesn't sound pretty interesting maybe we have cat environ and this looks like it contains some useful things or yes it shows us the last command i think that's uh, the location of the command i'm not sure that's it but let, let's just try this one. Maybe we're lucky. Uh, what was it? Environ. Let's use that. Let's go in here. Let's execute it here. And we get something. And it looks like, yeah, the user is called HTB, like I thought they were called. And what's more interesting is, why is this in the way? Let's just get this one in here. Let's go to a JSON for mother well i don't think that's json anymore but we can read it better in here than before just because the whole swagger stuff was in the way so we have an app module app main app app so we, we can say this this looks a bit like a python i think it was python yeah it was this uvicorn thing so we are pretty sure that it's python we have an api key that's amazing maybe we can copy that and we have the working directory is home htb so using my knowledge as a specialist in coding i am assuming there is a file called main in a folder called app that's that's a big brain time of a software engineer going to hack there's also a log i think so it looks like there is a log but for now let's try something so let's go with slash home slash htb and then the folder app and then main pie and let's try this and <laughs> yes nice we get we get the code of the main file now that's amazing so we can enumerate what's going on but uh, yeah maybe we can find out how to get admin permissions to write a file so we can upload our shell maybe or maybe not now this is great because if we're lucky enough and the application was coded badly which most time it is since it's a ctf we can find out the secret used to create the jvt and forge our jvts and um, yeah maybe we can replicate one of the admin himself like just using the sub one which is the one for the admin user and then we can log in as the real admin user and hopefully they have the debug flag enabled 
Now, this is a bit tedious to read, right? So let's just grab this command and paste it in here so we get not authenticated. Right, yeah, I need I need to be authenticated, of course, otherwise I can't exit. But why isn't the header in there as well? Okay, great. So now I've got the authentication header in here as well. And we can use it and we get the file and there is a neat tool called jq and then we can just say i want to see the content of the file i haven't installed jq ah right that's a new one so let's try it again okay um maybe with the dash r and we have essentially a python file here that's cool that's perfect now we can analyze this file and have a complete python file that we can take out does that make sense we have a complete Python file that we can analyze and find out what the hell is going on, what's wrong, and maybe what's most important to us is somewhere there should be an authentication. So somewhere they should check. So Debs parse token. This looks like, yeah, current user. They're getting the current user using this Debs parse token. And if we take a look at the steps, we should find it somewhere in the code. Not sure where. There is an app.api import steps. So let's do a quick check if we can find an api.py. No, no, we can. Let's take a look. So we have app.api import steps. Okay, so maybe the file structure is app.api depths.py. Let's try that one. And yeah, we found our second file. And we have this headers authenticate and user credentials. So maybe we are close to finding out how we can forge our custom JVTs with whatever we want. Because I think um, for this debug flag, you know, this debug flag, that's this debug key that's missing from JVT, they're saying it's missing from the JVT. And we can't find it in here when we fetch the user so i'm not sure if it's a flag on the user or if it's just on the jvt and not on the user object for some reason but instead of doing that we can just use the admin account we will see in the -da 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 next episode see you there bye bye